<laughs> Welcome to Film Study, an all-American universe podcast with Lexi. I am Lexi. I don't know why I said it like that, but don't forget to like, subscribe, share, rate the podcast five stars. Really appreciate just in general, let me say this, all of the support and all of the all of the love. It really really means a lot. I don't know why I'm getting sentimental today, but it, it does mean a great, a great deal to me just seeing sort of, I, th- I feel like I'm starting to come up on like two years of doing this podcast. So it's just really cool to see wow. that it resonates with you all and that like you, you know, that th- this makes you smile. And I see, you know, people are like, oh, you're my favorite podcast. And that's just insane, insane for me to, to hear. So yeah, I don't know. Just was on my heart to say. I'm kidding. So anyway. <laughs> get into homecoming episode 214 uh the penultimate episode right before the season finale of season two and look carmen you ready i'm ready so 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 stand up for something (laughs) i i don't uh, i understand why it's named stand up for something but also I just am just like, where does this fit? Like, I know where it fits, but I'm also just like, I feel like usually they're a little bit more like they, uh, they, right. they say the title, like in some of the dialogue. I don't, I don't think we got that this week. I don't think we got that this week. Um, let's start with Nate. Let's start with Nate. Nate, Nate. who is in the midst of her campaign. Oh, wait, wait, wait what am I even doing? See, I'm exhausted, everybody. This is. <laughs> I'm done. I feel like I keep saying this, but y'all gonna keep hearing me say this on the like on the All American Review and now on this one because my life for the past week and a half has been insane. Probably actually two weeks. I'm lying. Two weeks has been crazy, crazy busy, and so just running from one thing to the next. So anyway, life, Carmen, is, life is always crazy busy, y'all. Don't it's, it's <laughs> always don't think these two weeks is always. Crazy Please. Busy. So if you know that I, if if I'm actually saying it's crazy busy, that means it's actually insanely busy. <laughs> well, I accept that. I will if I'm that. if I'm actually if I'm actually <laughs> like saying it out loud, because it, it, to your point, my life is just generally busy, but like it's it's, it's up a notch. Actually, yeah, it's up up a notch for sure. Um, but what's your general thoughts, overall thoughts on this episode rating? You know the drill. <laughs> Um, I will, I'll give it a seven. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, why, why a seven? Um, I mean, I feel like it was, it was like one of the episodes where it kind of, you know, in your work pushed a storyline along, but not mm-hmm. a whole lot happened in it. Um, right. You know, it was like, we didn't get a whole lot of things to happen in it, but it was like one of the things that just, you know. Push the story kind of just there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it wasn't just there. It did serve a purpose. We did get some movement in the in the storylines, but it was. I agree. I think in general, the sentiments that I'm hearing from folks was that it was not their favorite episode. Um, I want to say yes, it was written by Holly Overton and David Ramsey directed the episode. I'm gonna say I think a seven is solid. I think a seven is solid. Um, I agree with that rating. It's like between a 6.89-ish to a 7, which is not that far off from a 7. So I'll just round it up. I'm going to round it up and say it's a 7. Um, mm-hmm. And you actually, you know what? I'm going to give it a 7.2 only because we got some fun stuff at the end with the triangle. With the triangle. That's the only reason it got a 7 for me. Without that, it probably got like a 6. But, <laughs> but I do think, to your point, yeah, to to your point, it did push a lot of the storylines forward and it's it's setting it up to be um we just don't know what's going to happen and I actually think that's uh, sometimes it's not the best, but also like for this instance, I think it is good that we don't really know what to expect for the homecoming season finale, especially as they're sort of trying to get renewed and everything like that. Um mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's good to keep everybody on their toes uh coming into coming into the season two finale so back to back to nate who's doing her campaign um we get let me say say this because again 
we never know from one episode to the next whether we gonna get Nate or we gonna get Keisha. Sometimes they surprise us and we get both of them. <laughs> but this time Keisha was absent and we heard that she's doing a little investigative thing in New York. Yes. Which how can you just go to New York? Like, don't you got classes? Like how are you just yeah. gonna pop, I think pop up not in New hurt York? No I take it she's not That's true. And I guess she is, well, maybe she is hurt and she's just like, she can't, she's given up on attending classes because she won't be able to make up the uh, the grade or whatever. So she's like, I'm not even gonna, you know, sit in the back and watch. I'm not even gonna do that. So uh, she's trying to look for old. She's determined. Yeah, you're right. She will even be limping to the board. Exactly. (laughs) So she's looking for old dancers to, to speak up about, um, about the program which i think i did uh in my predictions i was like she should she should do like i think and we better get there better be an exciting character that they introduce or we better have seen i i think reba should make a comeback and you know speak about whatever it is just because i like when they you know follow up with characters that they've introduced and stuff like that so that's on that um but yeah nate is in the midst of her campaign and she is i think having a pretty important interview with the school paper the Mm -hmm. the bu paper um but she reschedules this interview with this dude who do we think that he's the secret admirer i was thinking it i was definitely i was thinking thinking it too it was giving vibes it was giving vibes um but reschedules this interview to help the tennis team um because they had released the footage of their police stop and it's sort of you know that news is as it often does in the real world uh just falls i think to the wayside is in the news cycle for you know a couple days and then just forgotten about Mm -hmm. and so misses the interview the interviewer is just like oh you know i thought this was important to you whatever and nate ends up being like well you know what is important to me I want to feel safe. <laughs> Why am I wilding I so much this that. week? I don't understand. You always <laughs> have to characters. You always do voice changing when you do characters. But anyway. Have, yeah, that, that's how Nate, that's how Nate sounds to you? Okay, go ahead. It's not. It's not. That was so funny. I just had to be, it was just like a serious, like I had to be oh, serious. No, that's me. your serious, okay. That's my serious, serious voice. voice. Just a I general know. serious character voice. Mm, um, okay. <laughs> I just went, mm, okay. <laughs> I got you. Yes. Um, so, shoes the interviewer is just like, I'm going to help out with this, with this, um, with this idea that they're coming up with for for bringing more awareness to the police stop and then sort of is in the is in the student center and sees Thea and Thea's like, like how can I help the tennis team is like miss me with that and so Nate gives her some advice and is like you're gonna have to come with a little bit more honey <laughs> you're gonna have to come with a little bit more um, which you know, was accurate. Yeah, well, after that, her team found out that she's going pro through the news. right, and she didn't tell them ahead of time, and so yeah, Nate was just like, "Yeah, this is not the time, not the time at all. You're gonna have to come with a little bit more energy." And so Nate is really just, I think, assisting the tennis team for the majority of the episode. Ends up apologizing to newspaper. The sorry, the newspaper dude ends up apologizing to him. After Nate is just like, you know, you should do a story on on this. Um, and so that was sort of Nate's story in, in this episode. By the way, that newspaper guy is fine. He is cute. He, he is, is attractive. Um, so what did you think of Nate? <laughs> um, what you mean? The, like the episode? Yeah, just, just, just Nate's story. Oh, I just. I'm like you. He, he, the purpose he served the episode pretty much was to be an um, aid to the tennis assist. team. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, to push. You know what was going on with the the tennis team, which you is know, interesting because usually they don't, you know, do that. Like even if, um, even if she is still supporting the tennis team, it feels like in past episodes. I I don't really think that we've gotten a true episode where their storyline is to support somebody else 
in this way Mm -hmm. and like do a half sort of storyline thing but that was definitely in this episode which was sort of surprised by that but yeah it was uh it was yeah it was just a regular regular old nate now nate might as well have just been a part of the tennis team story yeah at this at this point yeah it was pretty much like yeah, but I guess the the last couple was oh, you know, we got where Nate was doing the campaign, you know, but so this time we got where he was supporting the tennis team more. Than right, anything. exactly, exactly. Um, okay, just take a pause real quick. Yeah, it says uploaded ninety nine percent. Is that's good? I just don't want to make yeah. sure. Yeah, like, no, you're good. Recording. Okay, you're okay, good. good. Um, someone who actually did have an individual storyline, I think, apart from the greater tennis team thing. Cam. Cam and K.E.K. I want to ask your thoughts on this K.E.K. storyline in general. Going into this episode, what did you think about it? Um, I don't know. What was my thought about the... As far as what, like the whole just story your yeah, just happened. your thought. Like, like, is it something that you've been into? Is it engaging? Do you think? No, I I haven't really been that engaged into it. <laughs> the um, way you said that, so nah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't like been like that stupid engaged, and I don't know, I don't know what is it that is missing that really grabbed me. Like, I get it; they're pretty much, you know, dealing with, you know pledging and the, the stuff that's going on that's not supposed to be going on pledging but it just still hasn't grabbed me yet I don't know what it's missing mm-hmm. but it hasn't grabbed me yet it doesn't make me be like you know excited to see it come on my screen no. right right even with this twist and I was just like <laughs> I feel like I've been saying this so often but I was like somebody needs to get hurt like we need to you said nobody have been shot in a while. Like, on what? All American. That was for All American. That was for All American. I you need to add some context for that. I was that was a different oh, different yes. context. I can't different context. Yes. No action. No real action but, has really popped up. Yeah, I don't I sometimes it's because here's the thing. Get, getting seriously injured and de- you know, don't take this audience, don't take a walk away from this being like Lexi wants black trauma. Well, maybe take you that know, away from it. Maybe you know take that away from it. I know. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you know, what? if you're gonna run, if you're gonna run with that, go ahead and run with it. But harming, injuring, things like this, it's a very sort of quick, easy storyline way to get at sort of increasing the tension, like making it. You, just making it a little bit more engaging because it raises the sta- it raises the stakes basically because you know life and death at that point or like something some somebody being hurt and them being unable to do things and so when you do that it's just a very quick way to, to sort of raise the level of engagement that people have in the story um, and so that's why I'm always like oh, somebody hasn't been hurt in a while let's see that let's see that <laughs> obviously you know obviously what I would- go ahead. I would I would say that I am a little interested in um you know how it ended as far as they're gonna try to come up with a plan yes to expose the ones so I'm interested in what kind of plan hopefully it's an interesting plan um a plan to expose you know the brothers that still doing exactly you know yeah exactly because so I think the heart of the story is a really good. Uh, it has merit. It has merit. Like, it's a really good story to tell about, you know, and I think not just on the surface level of like, oh, pledging, but I think in general, it's a really good story to tell that we don't always have to do things the hard way. We don't always have to do things the toxic way. Like, there is a better way. And as we learn and as we grow, we can start to evolve our methods. I think that's a really good takeaway from this storyline. But to your point, mm-hmm. it's just we've been getting this storyline for a while. Yeah, and so you, you always think, have to Yeah. Do you think it would have been more interesting if we actually got to see them being snatched up? And, I think you know what I'm so. Saying? Like, like imagine like a shot of them just running idiot. through the woods. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. I think the other thing, and I know I haven't sort of summarized this storyline, so let me do that now, but Cam obviously is about to cross over, so he's about to be a full-fledged brother in the brotherhood of K.E.K. 
then a recruit winds up missing cam like comes to jr with that who's trying to get ready for a get get ready for a game um they find the dude whose name was lou um and he ends up making it back from this like they dropped them in the woods and they just had to find their way back to campus so they find it cam says he'll handle the dudes that took them which was they were from another chapter but i think it was also like a historically historically black college or university and so it's like there's dynamics mm-hmm. with that where they were trying to you know be be delicate about what that could mean for hbcus in general and then um you know then it ends up being like who you know who let these dudes know from the other chapter that we were changing up things and that's like uh and then obviously at the end of the day like we said jr is just like i need you to help me you know ice out the corruption he was so dedicated he was so sincere <laughs> ice out the corruption of our new brotherhood uh you know, so our our new brother so our new brothers so our guys or our new brothers are walking into a burning house like that's so so serious man <laughs> everything's so serious i love it um part of the reason i sort of like this storyline but also was just like this is interesting was number one i say that all the time but it i thought the dude was kicked off the team that was high, like running the what was it the the other line anyway like that he was running in yeah line. i thought he was too and, and so it's the like fact that he like, right yeah, he's he, sort of the reason that this there. dude got hurt yeah why is he still here and I wasn't thought, he in the room and yes. wasn't he in the room he was in the JR room and i think it was th- yeah. him it was this dude that told the other chapter probably a couple of weeks ago or whenever this happened that like oh we're just like we're not being as hard as we usually or we typically were or whatever so that was the connection there but i'm like why is he still here <laughs> like That's now he's the reason that this dude got hurt and then the other thing was i typically love seeing cam's passion like a, uh, i love seeing la cam i love seeing like the the touches the the moments of la cam coming out um and i love the energy with which he brought to the people that were doing the harming so the other chapter but mm-hmm. him coming so hard at jr didn't really land for me that much because i'm just like you know J, and we'll get into it when we get to the like baseball team stuff but it's like you know JR has this big game coming up. You know that his mind is elsewhere. So Cam just and I understand that it was a serious situation, but even after mm-hmm. the dude was found, it was like Cam just decided in his mind, you need to handle this right now at this second. Like I don't <laughs> I'm not getting the, you know, after well, the dude the- was found. Yeah, but that's, like you said, that's definitely the L.A. cam that we got because, yeah. you know, that was more of, come like, you know, because he, he, he... His frustrations away, rising, so. yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, this is the second time a similar thing that happened. So, at this point, I think he just felt like, okay, it's J.R. Place. Like, you're, it, obviously, you know, like you said, the guy's still there. So, right. So and like, I get that yeah, again. I don't. I don't know, but I also just feel like, even with that, Cam would be understanding that it this doesn't this need to happen. Time. Right? Like this doesn't need to be. They don't need to solve it in the next hour. And that's what I was getting. With, like with Cam is like, you need to handle this at this second. And I'm like, he doesn't though. He doesn't need to handle it at this second. <laughs> He can wait till tomorrow. He can wait till the game's over. Like, that's what I was getting, and I just did not understand. Like, no, not at this moment. No. I don't know, because it was just like, why? Yeah. You need to be for real, Cam. You need to be for real. You see this man is trying to work out. You know that this man is barely making it into his game. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and so that part just was a little was a little iffy to me. Um, but, yeah, all of the things that we've said about this storyline, I'm interested to see what they'll do when we get back to that, when we get to predictions. But um, the only reason I can understand Cam is because the guy was missing. Like, I think mm-hmm. if he wasn't missing, he probably wouldn't have had such an urgency about. But he you know, also had this man. urgency. I feel like the urgency was like almost even more after he was found. And that's what I'm saying. I got the urgency when he was missing. Like, 
that's JR. Like, you are in charge of that. You are the leader yes. of this uh, frat. Like, you need to you need to handle this. But then after it was like, okay, he's good. I got a game today in t- t- an hour or whatever. Like, let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's. <laughs> there's priorities. Mad. Is this A1? Yeah, he was still mad. He, a- came down. he, he was after- mad. Listen, I, I'm, I'm coming down too hard on him. He had to just fight his way through the woods and all that he crap. Did. So He did. You're right. He did. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but yeah. Not fight we'll his talk way about- through the woods. I'm done. <laughs> he had to fight his way through the woods. <laughs> all my life. <laughs> all my I life. Had I had fight. to fight. Um, but we'll get back to that when we get to predictions and, and what we see with that story coming up, what that twist might be that we've been talking about. And we're talking about Amara and Marcus. Marcus getting all sentimental and stuff. Um, was it, was it, we're just getting sentimental with the team. He was just like, I was like, why are we getting a random speech <laughs> i don't know it felt random to me but i was like why are we getting Tell a random Marcus speech about that. mark has been real since How? the last couple episodes <laughs> <laughs> this man was just like we've come a long way he's since the last a- homecoming i feel like he's we- been on the, a lot of you he's been on emotion like it's emotion sides for a couple episodes now. i know is he taking his meds again did they drop that storyline because remember he wasn't taking them i don't know if he's actually taking his meds I'm done. She like he gotta be. He's such a calm, quiet. <laughs> no, no. I'm saying I don't know. To your point, he has been sort of emotionally up and down. Obviously, not so much this episode, but he has been sort of in his feelings more lately. So I'm like, did they did they forget that he wasn't taking his meds, or did did he just start retaking them? And that we don't know. Because now that you brought that up, I'm like, I I forgot about that storyline. So then that might come back up. At the at the season finale, but he's all sentimental. He's like, "Oh, the, ten, the, the tennis, the baseball team has come so far. Yes. We 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 survived Thanks a scandal, like me. all that stuff. Exactly. Thanks for me. You know, to be your coach. Thanks. That so part. Daddy. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? It felt like one of those speeches where the character is leaving. Like I'm like, what is she got a new job? What's happening? Then I'm like, I know he didn't get a new job. He not gonna leave his boo. Mm-mm. But every single time I see them, I'm just like, get them off my screen. <laughs> They're growing on me. They're growing on me. They're growing. Are you on serious? Me. They are. Don't even. They're growing on me. They are. Get off my pot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. I can, I can say that to Carmen because we're so comfortable with each other. She knows I'm messing around. I'm glad they're growing on you. <laughs> you're not you're not feeling it you're not feeling the vibe i'm love. still not feeling it i'm still not feeling they're just boring they're the story <laughs> is boring oh my gosh oh like my what God. they're growing nothing me. new same old epic <laughs> see that again they're there is they're <laughs> not the epic new <laughs> They're cute. They're cute. They're becoming cute. <laughs> Bro, I am freaking wild and on this podcast today. Oh so my God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, and we'll get back to the to this team, but it's really like Marcus. And I so I guess the same with Nate. Like they were to serve other people's storyline because Marcus was helping the baseball team and Amara was talking about this uh sort of simone brings up this idea of having a rally which we'll get back to the rally in a second but amara is sort of dealing with the board and the head of the board not wanting the president to approve and miss robinette (laughs) miss robinette the secretary or whoever she is uh in the in the president's office yeah uh went over her head to talk to the board that they're having this rally because she was feeling some type of way about the rally um, and so the board was trying to push down on Amara to say, like, we, cause they are, are her bosses to say, we don't want this to like, accept the, like the Georgia conferences, like agreement, the NDA, you know, mm-hmm. push the tennis team to sign this NDA, uh, and don't really talk about the, don't talk about the stop for, you know, advantageous purposes, maybe to the university, publicity etc 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 good standing all that good stuff uh and amara is just like i'm not gonna do that as we knew she would because she's a saint she's a saint <laughs> she's we still 
she is a, is she not a saint carmen like we this girl hasn't even i'm still waiting i'm still waiting on her uh little rendezvous with zeke and now the fact that she's with Marcus to come to the light and did it that, hasn't did, yet. Did we see a breakup? Did we see a breakup between No, her? we never first well, what yes, here's the thing. I we did see her. a breakup between her and Zeke. We did, and then apparently they were just back together because that's when Cam was telling Keisha, like, oh, they're talking in the phone. So apparently they're still together. But then literally the either the same episode or the next episode, she was essentially trying to do that toll pros and cons thing chooses marcus blah 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 blah. but we still haven't seen the impact on keisha which i think would be personally exciting and just the impact between these Lexi two men like, i want the drama i want i do drama. in particular you know, and i've been making <laughs> jokes about like upping the drama for other storylines but for amara in particular i just I want her to not be so spotless. And I know she has it in her. I know she has it in her. But you know, do you know what I mean though? Like I want her to not be Well, it seems like this is gonna be like this is gonna be her if she have not broke it off with um Keisha Dad, then this definitely gonna be auntie like um if they let us see it, they let us see it. It's gonna be niece and auntie. Um, yeah. <laughs> you mean you mean a mama? That's 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 mama and daughter. I don't know what you talking mama about. Amara daughter. is her real mom. Uh, Amara well, is her real mom. Be, I accept yeah, nothing it's less. Gonna be both of them, mother and this. daughter. I don't know if the writers are actually going to give it to us. And I really, really want it. And not for just any sort of random things, but I just feel like. Even Marcus, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but even Marcus has a little bit of an edge to him. Like even with yeah, like with his thing, there's a little bit of a dark, you know, darker past. Obviously, he took those drugs. He admitted to it and all that good stuff. But there's still just like he has this ongoing sort of challenge that he's overcoming. Amara always she does everything makes right. the right decision. Yeah. And I just want to see her for once make the wrong decision because as a writer and as an audience member, I just want to see how she handles that. I want to see how people react to that around her. And I want to see how she handles because she is someone who makes the right decision Mm -hmm. 10 times out of 10. The one time where she doesn't do it, I want to see if that like unravels her or like if she's just like this. I have a secret side of me, you know what I mean? So I just want to know more about her. I just Amara, I love her, and, I, and it's because I love Amara her character so much. You want all the smoke with you today, all of it. I don't want the it. smoke. I just want to like what is like show me the real it's you. Okay. <laughs> show me the real it's you, okay. Amara. You want the smoke. You want the smoke. It's okay. Maybe this is the real her, but I'm just like yeah, I, now I'm starting to think of like uh, I don't know why I'm telling this story on the podcast, but. People would always beg me. They're just like, Lexi, I've never seen you get mad. And like now I understand where those people are coming from. Because I'm like, I, I want to like, see you get, get mad, it. Amara. You're like, I get it. I get it. I get it. Exactly. <laughs> so that's that's just it on that. But she I, I I to in this instance, I am actually very glad that she was super supportive of her niece and supportive of the movement. Um mm-hmm. to 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 draw light to this speaking of that speaking of that simone is listening to trolls listening mm-hmm. to trolls uh about them releasing this video her and the tennis team trying to figure it out we've mentioned this a couple times um thea thea is turning pro as we know and they found that out i think in this at the sort of the beginning or the la- the ending of the last episode but she didn't tell them as we said then she tries to help them they say go ahead on Thea go ahead on um but she's trying to figure out what to do Nate ends up inviting Lando and Damon this little triangle we got Mm. Lando and Damon to talk to Simone about this Damon gets his mom you know you know you know mama Sims (laughs) Miss Kena Sims you know that she loves Simone. So within like what five minutes, she sends Simone a text. And in in between this five minutes, I'm gonna say this. I don't know how you feel about this, but for me, Lando was a little thirsty because he saw that Damon got his mom 
to like help her. So then Lando was just, like, you know, we should just do a movie night. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Don't do him! Don't do him! Wait! No, you don't think so? Him. You don't agree? No. No. Th- this is what I'm asking. This is I just th- those were the vibes <laughs> that I got. Maybe that's because I'm Team Damon. Obviously, if I haven't made that clear, but oh, you, you I, don't I don't know why this is a shock. I'm torn. I'm torn. Like I'm so I used to you be. You are. Team, I'm not. I used to be hundred percent between Damon, but I can't lie. I do I lie. think I was more. I think I was more torn towards the beginning of this, like the second half of the season. But after uh-huh. seeing, what is it? A couple episodes ago, when Simone was like, "I want to be with Damon," and then it was that whole Nate, uh, Nate Jr. thing. I was just like, "She's back home. She came, she came back." <laughs> Lando wants a movie night. Um. And so they sort of agree, but then Simone gets this text from text from uh, Kina that says she would help, and like, what if they do a rally? So Simone asks Amara to hold the rally, mm-hmm. um, and then the Georgia conference comes out and says they're going to give their team their spot back if they sign a non-disclosure agreement and they don't do the rally. The team and Amara is basically tells Simone like, whatever it is, it needs to be a full unified consensus team decision like we can't you can't even do votes right that's what it means is everybody has to agree yeah. um and so the team wants to sign the nda simone does not and this is when we get this whole thea trying to make up for not being there gets coco goff to show up coco goff does the whole you know you know being black women in sports being black women in tennis this is an important issue you know her little you know um was it called celebrity guest star moment Mm-hmm. Bless her heart. And then, it, then the team changed their mind. The tennis team changes their mind. They do the rally. Mrs. Robinette apologizes after the rally. Uh, and then they say that the 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 eternal attorney general is gonna open up an investigation for um for the the stop. Um so what did you think about that? We're gonna get back to the triangle stuff. Think about what the team? Yeah. Um, I mean, I felt like, you know, the way that it was given to us realistic, you know, especially with everybody, you know, once they got the approval to, you know, play in the what is it, the lead or something? It was mm-hmm. like, Oh, well, we got what we wanted, you know, and it was like I I really it might be strange, but I really liked it because it, it gave realistic, you know, like everybody's mm-hmm. not really down for putting it all on the line yeah yeah and yeah one thing that i love about homecoming is that they show the totality and not the totality let me let me not that's not the right word to use they show that black folks are not a monolith they show that we have different perspectives, that we have different opinions. Not everybody is the, I'm going to be, you know, an advocate. I'm going to be in my advocacy bag. Like, not everybody is like that. Like, I am a person that's like that, but not everybody thinks that way. Think not that everybody way. is yes. that. Da- like, it, and it's not even, you know, there are people that are not down for the cause, and we know them people, the ashy people. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, no, it is. Some people that don't, and it's not even like I don't even, of course, not the ones who just like, oh, like it's not pretend like it don't exist, but it just got some people that's not willing to put it all on the line. You know what I'm saying? Like in that, so there's the ashy people. I'm I'm starting to think I'm like maybe I should be tired more often than this podcast, a little bit more freer. Uh, but it's not, it's not that. But to your point, there's people in the middle who are just like, look. I support 1000. Even the girls, right? The girl the girl is the one who took the video, who sent it to Simone. Um yes. and did all of that. And she was still like, "Hey, look, well, we got our spot back. Like that was the purpose, honey." That was the purpose. Um and so it's just yes. like not everybody and <laughs> can I, you know I'm going to either come with an acting or writing or a director or my psychology background. So in this time it's going to be psychology background. There's this thing uh in leadership uh called reluctance to lead i'm not gonna super get into it but there is the thing and i I used to talk about this with my with my former boss a lot is you know when you have 
someone of color in, in particular because we're talking about homecoming a black uh, black sort of person who is on the rise let's say just in a corporate environment or a person who is on the rise and who is black it's so important to when they're getting into these positions say like number one do you want to be representation like is that what you want to do do you want to advance the cause because that's our responsibility to take on and at times like we always feel like we don't have that choice but i feel like part of evolving as a people is Mm -hmm. knowing the choice like we don't we don't always need to be the perfect representation we can choose to be as involved as we want in advancing the cause and some people like a simone are more like we need to advance our cause as many opportunities as we get and there are some people that are just like look we we accomplished our goal we got the thing we back in the con like we back in the competition and that's Mm -hmm. what we want and we don't need to do all this extra stuff because you know, who you knows have, about the negative consequences and then you have some people who only as you can see a lot of them was like you know they didn't want to do it but somebody come in that's famous and it's like oh we're back on board right because a lot of people oh go, girl a and lot then, of yes and then it, the movement and the flow of the cloud what's so popular like, yeah what's popular at the time and so again to show all of those aspects of just real life to your point it was very very real and that is something that i really really love and appreciate that homecoming does um and they definitely have a slant like they definitely are slanted towards advocacy which i love because i'm an advocate but i love that they don't like they they also give voice to people that are just not that way um and they Mm -hmm. they make space they make space for everybody's opinions to be heard and that's something that i love and so that's what i loved about this storyline um was was like that aspect of just showing that black people are not a monolith and that they're these conversations are very nuanced um and you know and then you know the attorney general in, ends up doing the investigation and miss robinette comes around and she's just like tells amara like girl you know i thought you know i'm just so used to it not working out but these kids Mm -hmm. these kids they they be doing it (laughs) they be doing it they don't quit they don't got no quit in them so yeah that's that's what happened and i'm just like oh sometimes the kids do be sometimes the kids do be having quit you you ain't you ain't hear the conversation (laughs) early they they had some quit in them honey but i see where you're going i love it miss robinette so that was um that was that that was that um super super quickly on damon and the uh baseball team gearing up for the championship we already said that marcus was super sentimental about saving the program and right they they said that to save the program it had to be a championship team within a year they are still within a year because it's only been (laughs) this is only second semester okay it's only second semester freshman year for Mm -hmm. simone um and so they're still within this sort of year window that they had to become a championship team um and you know damon's feeling the weight of that obviously because he is the dude that really saved the program got marcus the job uh is obviously the mlb prospect like he gave Uh up the mlb to be on this team so he a lot is resting on his shoulders and so marcus gives damon that pep talk and that that and then damon gives the pregame speech to the team he mentioned that jr had some other responsibilities that he was doing and because he wasn't loose he was sucking that game up he was not doing good (laughs) i was just like boy i knew I knew oh, that she was finna get in there and do stink it up. Oh, but then I think Damon gives him a pep talk and he ends up doing a little bit better after the pep talk oh, from Damon. Gosh. Um and look, because Lando started uh he started um the game as pitcher and Damon sort of came in as a relief relief pitcher. Yeah, I got my baseball terminology on. But he came in as a relief pitcher for for Lando to close out the game. When, I don't know if you felt this way, but when Damon was walking onto that mound, I said, Peyton, you are screaming MLB. I 
Peyton has embodied this character in a way that needs to be applauded because every time like there are so many specific moments where I see Peyton and I'm just like dude you you are studying this thing you remind me of college athletes when he was walking onto that mound I was like you're reminding me of a ba- like a professional baseball players so I just have to give Peyton his props for just that walk onto the mound <laughs> <laughs> was so good. No, I'm being so serious. Through. It was so good. Did you not get did you not get confidence from that walk? I got confidence from that walk. I got like he finna shut the game out, which he almost did, but did not because they ended up getting a, a home run the other team and they lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just have to say Peyton, Peyton continues to kill it as Damon. And honestly, I wasn't upset that they lost. I'm gonna be honest. That might be an you unpopular mean, opinion. I wasn't upset because I think the lost was earned almost because for the past couple of episodes, we've seen that the, the baseball team has really, because they've been doing better and because they've been improving, they keep sort of acting like they don't need to work, that they just got it now. They, they In the beginning, they were hungry, right? And now it feels like everybody else besides Dame in every other episode, we get it where like the baseball team is like, we got it, we got it. And we it's like, it. oh, <laughs> y'all still got to work, honey. Y'all still got to work. And it, so, and, and they, wasn't the best, they wasn't the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? They didn't start right. the best, So it does make They were overachieving. <laughs> Yeah, like it was like it does make sense for them to lose. Like y'all was yeah. good, but y'all wasn't the best of the best. So and, and it's and it's it's saying especially because again you all were hungry at the beginning, and we literally watched this storyline where you've become less hungry because now you're you have this great record you have this belief in damon and so it's just not as you know in the beginning they was trying to prove to damon like we're good enough that's not even yeah. there anymore now they just believe it right where they're not just like damon's the only good person on the team and it, you know they should have confidence in themselves but i'm saying like the work we have seen that the writers have established in these past i think several episodes that the baseball team was getting a little they were getting a little prideful and so i i was not surprised that that pride caught up with them um caught up with them a little bit and they look they still put forth a good a good effort um but and so the team celebrates i this is such a small note but i just was like why is the team celebration in a random dorm common room like it's not in the student center it's not in the gym i just did not like that it was in a random dorm common room because i'm like but i was just like i understand but also it just again as someone who has worked in res life i'm like teachers don't be up in dorm and common rooms like that like that is very uncommon so like coaches or whatever do they do not be up in dorm common rooms like y'all could have put it in the gym y'all could have put it in the student center i'm sorry i had to i had to it was just nitpicky things um anyway so back to the triangle so Damon tells, and I, I did this tweet after the show because I think this season especially we've seen Damon grow so much just like emotionally. He's so emotionally mature. I think he is, and I don't know if you share this thought, Carmen. I would love to hear your thoughts, but I feel like he's, in my opinion, the most emotionally mature in this show as far as like the the younger ones go. As far as the college students, I feel like he is the most emotionally mature out of all of them at least from what i've seen this season what do you think um i don't know i feel like jr is pretty um emotionally mature you think jr is the emotionally (laughs) mature one yes i do i do feel like jr is because especially like if you're talking about you're talking about just this season or overall i'm like, talking about this season like where we've seen them i mean even last season that's a little bit of a stretch but i i mean JR was overall that, especially where they are right now but because for a long time it was jr and nate that always was the ones that was giving the sound advice jr always had a little bit of a tude i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> They were once always the two that was giving the sound advice. I'll, I'll give were. you Nate. I'll give you Nate. I'll give you Nate. I'll give you Nate. I'm not giving you JR. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so being honest like in my that. opinion. 
They'll do him. Like listen, that. you you got your opinion. That, that's that's cool. Uh, that's, yeah, cool. Yeah. that's cool. That's cool. But no, I think and it really I think solidified for me where Damon was at. But to, to your point, he's grown. He wasn't always at this point. But Damon, first of all, obviously the confession that was a couple episodes ago with Simone, and then this. And obviously all this stuff that he's done with the baseball team let me add that in as well with him constantly reminding them to be on their game and be on top of their game uh, and how he's grown as a leader of the team this moment with Lando where he tells Lando like we wouldn't have made it this far without you oh um, yeah definitely how mature since the Land- with the Lando situation and him just being like yo man to man I know y'all got y'all. I love, and you still get the cocky, David. You still get the cocky, I David. He's like, I, I know I, y'all I, got y'all little thing. I know y'all got y'all little thing and everything. But man to man, I told her that I loved her. Yeah, don't don't leave out, and it's not serious, <laughs> right? It's not serious. <laughs> but I love this serious. woman so. That was shade. That was shade, and it was best. shade. But also, you know, he. He really did leave the we wouldn't have made it this far without you. And the the thing is, is like it really was shade. I feel like there's always a little part of Damon that will, you know, he's just cocky. He's confident. We always know this about him. But it was like the bookends of what he said, right? Like, we wouldn't have made this without you. Man to man, I want to be up front with you. Even though he did say the thing, like, it's not that serious. At the end of it, he was just like, I want to be honest. I told Simone I love her. But to be real like we're on the same team together um and so i just want to make sure that we're cool and so he ended with that and i was just like you done grewed up boy you done grewed up i I can't i gotta see it i gotta see it to to believe it i I gotta keep going like you don't think you don't think that you've seen it i I feel feel like it's been i i'm it's like i I believe, like, give me a couple more episodes to make me a true believer. <laughs> I mean, we only got one episode left in this uh, season, so well, you like, let me season. see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. The next episode. Let me see or yeah, next well, season. Let exactly. See, let, let me see it. See him still stand by if things don't go his way. You know. Let but me I think you know what you know why I say that though, because I didn't come to this you know thing lightly as i'm sure you know but for the audience no i didn't come to this seeing damon as emotionally mature the most mature lightly i think even back with lando to your point with this particular character damon has always always been the first of those two even without like even not including the simone stuff to be the bigger person in these situations and to be like you know what, Lando, like, I wasn't right for how I came at you or whatever. Or, you know what, Lando, you are an important part to this team. Or, you know what I mean? Just so he's always been, whenever they have their little fights, the first, I think, to put out that olive branch. And he did it again in this episode with Simone, uh, with regarding Simone, I should say, uh, to say, like, I'm going to be real with you. I have these feelings. Y'all have what y'all have going on. But at the end of the day, we are teammates and I, I we're cool now. So I don't want us not to be cool about that. And so I, it's just a thread that I've well, seen him walk. Wait, um, can we talk about Lendo faith when he told him that he told Simone, he loved him. Like, right. Oh, this man was God. shocked. <laughs> it was like, Hmm. It was like, a like he, he wasn't, he, he didn't like that. He didn't, I don't feel like he Lendo, didn't. He was like, Oh, Okay. But Lando, I feel like Lando is just not a fan of of Dame, and that's what I'm saying is that like I Lando makes the fact that he's not a fan of Damon very clear, and I don't think he needs to be a fan of Damon, but I don't think that Damon is necessarily a fan of Lando. But you don't, I mean, at least me, I don't get that from their interact. Like I get the sense that Damon respects Lando and he's like respects him enough to be honest with him at every turn of the way and so yeah I don't know I was the just thing super with Damon too... is a lot of people make prejudgment about him before even getting to know him you know like because yes. of his like 
people just make up their mind they're not going to like him, you know, like, yeah. just, and so therefore he's always in conflict with people because people always make a decision they're not going to like yeah, him. they just have these thoughts about they the, but he's like a really him. nice guy. Yeah. yeah. He's a really, like, a, 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 not necessarily saying caring to Lando, but he's like a really nice and caring guy. Uh, and it's like people really, you know, they have to grow to that point yeah, to see it. And so he cocky. is always. That's he's very cocky. That's... Yeah, I mean, look, he no, is, but not... I don't you know. know. When he first got to that school, it was like. No, I'm, was... look, I'm saying he is cocky, <laughs> that he will always be yeah. cocky. But yes. uh, yeah. I but think, you know, down. he's calmed down. And I think it's just like, I don't know. I've become very endeared to his character, especially seeing the growth that he's had from season one to to now. Oh yeah, I love me some. Damon. Um, look at me, Damon. <laughs> David, not Damien. I love it. Look at that. It only took two seasons. What? It only took two seasons. It took me only two seasons. <laughs> um. So obviously, Lando takes that and then goes to Simone. I guess for their little movie night, and says, "Our chemistry is undeniable." But, <laughs> and he ends up like asking, what did, I think he told her that what Damon said or something. And he was just like, let me be clear. I want well, to, you know, I don't want to. just say, I know you got this thing with Damon. He didn't say that Damon Oh, okay, me. okay. Yeah, he's just gotcha, said, I know gotcha, you got gotcha. But he, Damon, he said he knew about the thing with Damon and he essentially wanted to be upfront with her and make his intentions clear. Um, and he's like, like, I want more with you. And then, and then he, he kisses her. Um, I thought this scene was interesting, but I'm going to say this come through song choice. I don't know what the song is, but I loved it. I was just like the, the music supervising for this on point. So what did you think about that last scene? I was like, um, okay. Lando is like, oh, okay. Now he know what it is. He felt like he had to make this move because. I don't think if Damon would have not told him that, he would not have put it out there that he wanted more with her. So, I I don't know if, like, I, like, yeah, I think he really into Simone, but I also question, like, okay, why you waited until It felt like a competition thing. It felt like a competition thing to me. Or did he just feel, or was he just like, was you comfortable with what you had until you found out that Damon not only making a play for her, but he done said he loved her. So, or right. is it like you really want more? Like, so I'm not sure if I 100% trust, like, you know, his reason for putting all out there at that moment. Yeah. And I think I'm the same way. It was that competition of it all. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's like, he didn't say this stuff until Damon said it. And obviously, you know, he is, Damon is cocky and I'm sure he was feeling a little slighted that Damon said, like, I know what you have isn't serious and all that. Oh yeah, it was all in his um, face when Damon was <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was all that he was not okay with. Right, know, with exactly. Was yeah, it was all thrown in his face and we could see the reaction in his face that he was mm-hmm. not down for what Damon was saying. Um, even like, even at the beginning, before he mentioned Simone, when he was just like, we wouldn't have made this this far without, he was like, hmm. I'm like, he's giving you a compliment, dude. Take it, take it. Well, wait, so, let's talk um, about Damon over there eavesdropping. We forgot. Oh, right. I did forget about that. He yes. did eavesdrop on their conversation. And that's how he figured it out. That's yes. how he figured out that it was, that he had competent, what does synopsis say? He had competition for, uh, <laughs> Simone's heart and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, so for that reason, the the competition aspect on Lando's end, and then I just Simone, the way that Jeffrey plays her, plus the direction of the show, plus the writing of the show, has made it very unclear in terms of Lando, not in terms of Damon, but in terms of Lando, mm-hmm. where. Simone is at with Lando, right? Like clearly there's an attraction there. Clearly they're like friends with benefits, all that good stuff. But I don't, there was, I think one episode for certain, one episode for certain where I was just like, Simone is super into him. And it was whenever she was just kissing him all um, relaxed, like, like, just like, oh, you just finna kiss this man kiss this man and be comfortable right it was kissing in front of nate or something like that and so 
that's an episode where I felt like she really did like him. But I want to say, like, every other episode, I haven't gotten this strong indication that she's definitely that I, into him. That, yes, that he that he actually is competition for Damon. Like, there is there's nothing in my mind that feels he's competition for Damon. To me, he's safe and he's fun. Like, that's yeah. what he is for her. It's easy. Safe. Right, even yes. even with Damon, what did she say? Things with Damon are so all encompassing and intense, yes, and all of that all stuff, nothing. and yeah, it's all, yeah or all or nothing. And I'm sure yeah. part of this part of this context is that she, you know, her last serious relationship, they got married in Vegas and was about to make it official. You know what I mean? So she's, yes. you know, she's literally coming out of a serious thing. Um, with with Jordan and, and then to hopping to another serious thing with Damon. I don't know if that's like on her radar but, to do. But from day one, you always felt the this the deeper connection. Her, you know, yes, like with Damon. You always felt the And you the can drive. see it in her face. Like I don't yes, know. I just feel like it, you can feel it in their scenes. And there's a lot of some people what is it? There's a lot of people on TikTok. There's a lot of people on the clock app and you know the 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 I feel like the general sort of just average watchers who are not super into the all American sort of fandom, all American universe fandom or homecoming fandom that is in love with Lando. And from what I can see, it's this idea that like Lando puts Simone in her place or whatever that like Lando what? is attracted. Yeah, it's, it's it's really that. It's really this is what I've seen. This is what I've heard, and this is what I've seen. I, I want to give him that. But. Yeah, just like in the beginning, right when he was just like he sort of came with that energy where he was just like, oh, so I see you're a mean girl, even with um the thing he's just like oh so you're just gonna make up or you're just gonna like make assumptions about me like those types of early like early on in their relationship um so it's that aspect of it plus it's just recently I think a little bit of a recency bias like seeing him do all those things like he dropped off a care package or whatever whatever so it's seeing that he can sort of be for lack of a word a better word firm with her i guess but also showing his his caring side um and so they really sort of and plus just martin bob simple is i think he's super charming like we want to see him win he's such a good looking dude he's such a charismatic actor if you if you was talking about something like something that it's just they they have something they do have something good together but yeah they do have something good it's not her and Damon it's not it's it doesn't not have her and Damon fire. it doesn't have that same fire see Damon it doesn't and or that her. same depth or that same yeah, depth that of just her. like meaning yeah it scares her it scares her what it, she feels with Damon it does like, it really does exactly and I don't. It, and Lando. the thing is she can I feel like she can hide with Lando as well like I you know I know that he a couple episodes ago was just like oh it's about the girls on the tennis team and you want sisterhood and all that stuff but Lando doesn't really know her like David over here what did they, they knew each other they met each other one, like once obviously in the backdoor pilot and then it's very early on in in the first season what is it, like the third episode of the first season and David's over here being like I know you I know your heart like Lando is not giving that. He's not That's giving I know you, I know your heart. Like, even though I feel like Lando does give her great advice, I... It's not the same. Not it's sure not like this... what way to explain it, but it's more like a... It's, yeah, he doesn't it's truly like a, understand like fully heart. her. It, it's like general, you know, it's general good <laughs> advice. It's not it's advice like tailored to her. Heart. Exactly. Thank card. you. It's not tailored to her. It's not this level of exactly. understanding that she has. It's just good advice. It's like a, it a is. card you pick up and you hand it to her. And Damon is more of like he's going to like exactly to her for exactly. Her. Like there's a difference. Definitely. definitely and then understanding the context like does does lando even know that she has a has a kid has a child um so it's it's things like that or like just you know the just situation with their parents like she and damon just ha- have had this sort of deep relationship from like off rip from the jump um and then on the other side of that because we've been talking a lot about sort of damon and lando's perspectives on simone's perspective uh and this is what i feel like fans 
of Lando don't as ready as readily acknowledge, at least that I've seen, is that we truly do not know how Simone feels about Lando. And even so, that's one thing. And then the second thing is that with Simone, with Simone, Simone also understands Damon. Like, you know me and you know for me, something that's really big for me is having a reciprocal relationship. Damon and Simone have a reciprocal relationship. I think Simone has barely done anything for Lando. If you count listen, that, you should take up your photography. Like, okay. I think, <laughs> I think Simone, I think we, well, for me, I think I do know how Simone feels about Lando. Like, he he does like he's fun. She's just not that into him. <laughs> she's just not that into him, him in the way of he's fun. He's, yeah, he's easy. Yeah, he's I, I, I know he's that, easy. but I'm saying like it's like she's but, not. We it's clear how she feels about Damon. Like we know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like feel. she still avoid this. Like she avoid Damon. Like even even when you know the almost kiss when she was still with Jordan. Like she takes off running from Damon. Like running. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's way scar- more it intense. scares her. Versus it scares versus her. with Lendo, it's like. She doesn't care, like boom. She this is nice, him the exactly, first time. and that's what I'm saying. She doesn't have this depth of care for no. him. You're, you're preaching, you're spit, and that's what I'm saying. It's not a reciprocal relationship. No. Like she, you see how easily she kissed him. Um, when they first met, you, like she just boom slept with him, boom boom. She have yet. Do you? <laughs> not even that. Like, do you see how easily this woman? Do you, do you see how easily this woman when Lando was just like oh boom boom this is happening for me and this woman said well I'm not worried about you I'm gonna be worried about me like that's Simone <laughs> dude like that's and then for day we she would never ever ever and has never said anything similar to Damon we look we already and how do we know this because we already done been through it she was in a whole relationship being like how can I use these miles to go with you to Chicago like <laughs> I'm done. But I mean, let's be for real. Like, we need to be for real. We need to be for real, Auntie. Yes. It's not. It's not the same. It's not. It's, it's not fun. the same. It's fun. Lando is fun. He is. He's, he's, Lando is fun. He's fun for passing time. There's no real strings attached. If she didn't feel like dealing Definitely. with him today, she was just telling him, I feel like dealing with you and don't have to explain nothing. Like, no. That's, that's, that's all that is. It's very easy. It's very simple. Um, so I feel like, you know, we're getting into predictions. We, I feel like we've already sort of made clear what our thoughts about this whole love triangle, what she might do type of deal thing is. But predictions. Thanks for listening to Film Study, an All-American Universe podcast. And stay tuned for our predictions for the season finale, season two finale of Homecoming.